All right, welcome back to Chemisode, and this is the Chemisode for Chromatography. This is going to be the first of three parts in Chemisode, where we look at um, different types of chromatography and how chromatography can be used to identify different substances. Basically, the first the three types of things we're going to do is we're going to look at the theory and the qualitative analysis using chromatography. So they're the two um, things we're going to look at. And then we're going to do a separate one for the quantitative use of chromatography. The qualitative and the theory is going to be broken into two parts, which will be two different types of chromatography. One will be a paper and a TLC chromatography. The other one will be a HPLC and gas chromatography. So um, I'll split it up into three videos so you can um, then see where it all goes. Before we start, um, I'll remind you that we have got our um, Chemisode apps on the App Store, so you can go and have a look at those. Um, this Chemisode Pro Table is a free one, and the other ones are only about two or three dollars, I think they are, three dollars to download, and they have um, a, a, a massive amount of um, knowledge in there. They've got a lot of flashcards, which can help you with your studying, and they have access to, or links to all these videos as well. As I said, the Chemisode Pro Table is a free one, so um, head over to the App Store and have a look at those. Let's get stuck into some chromatography. Basically, um, the theory of chromatography is that we have what's known as a mobile phase, um, something that can move, moving over a stationary phase, something that is, is staying there. Um, and what chromatography deals with is it deals with the separation of different things as the mobile phase, this something that moves, moves over the stationary phase. Separation of a compound is what chromatography is all about, and that's due to the polarity of the different components in a sample being analysed, and the attraction they have to these two phases, or they have for the two phases, that being how attracted something is to a stationary phase and how attracted something is to a mobile phase. What basically happens is the, we have an um, interaction between um, something and the stationary phase and a mobile phase, and it's like the stationary phase and the mobile phase are having like a little tug of war with our um, little sample there. And depending on which one's stronger is where it will get separated out to, and obviously a mixture of some kind will have different components in it, and because those different components will have a different um, ability to attach to a mobile phase or a stationary phase, they will get separated out. Molecules in this, these mixtures, they become adsorbed and desorbed from the stationary phase. Basically, this is different to adsor sorry, absorption. Absorption is what a sponge does as it takes in the liquid, so it just um, kind of absorbs it, lack of a better word. And adsorb is actually where a weak bond is formed to the stationary phase. It's a bit different, so I've put this as a highlight and underline because sometimes they get um, they like to trick you with these type of words here. A molecule is adsorbed and desorbed from a stationary phase, and adsorption means that they form weak bonds to the stationary phase. So what happens is a mixture, a liquid of a mixture, basically as it goes to a stationary phase, it will actually bond with stationary phase. This will make more sense when I actually get into what these stationary phases are. Molecules that become adsorbed to the stationary phase more often move slower than molecules with less attraction to the stationary phase and thus we get the separation that I talked about where you have some things which are more um, attracted to one part of the mobile phase or the stationary phase and depending on that you get separation and thus you can identify the different compounds in your mixture. Let's go have a look at paper chromatography. Actually, before we go into paper chromatography, um, we're going to have a, this is a kind of an explanation of what I've said back here. So, what we've got is a mixture of two different types of fatty acids, one being lauric acid and one being steric acid. Now, these are both polar molecules because, well, they're an acid and we have a double O uh, here, which means it's a, a type of carboxylic acid. If you, if you remember your um, types of carbon, uh, sorry, what are they called? Carbon compounds from last year in year 11. Um, you remember that we have carboxylic acids which end in a C double O H. These are both carboxylic acids and they're both just a simple chain with a C double O H at the end of it. Now, what tells me about the polarity of these two different things is the size of the carbon chain. You remember from last year in year 11, if you have a small carbon chain, it means it's more polar than something with a long carbon chain. If something has a really lot of carbons in it, 
or a long chain, it's going to be less polar because you're going to have a larger area which is non-polar. So, you have two things which have varying polarity. What we have over here is a polar stationary phase. We have just, well, I've drawn here as a little box. This is like our stationary phase. And we've got a moving mobile phase. So it's obviously, if you have a polar stationary phase, your um, mobile phase is generally a non-polar um, substance. So, if our mobile phase is moving this way, and now we have a polar substance, here as our stationary phase, which one is, well, I've got already given it to you here. Steric acid will move further because it's more non-polar. The thing that is polar, the most polar compound being lauric acid here, will be more attracted to our polar fa phase, so therefore um, it will stay behind, form some bonds here, and then steric acid will move more with our non-polar phase because it is more non-polar, and thus you get separation happening. This is the same theory for each one of these different types of um, chromatography, which is that we use them in different ways for different things. So the theory is stationary phase, pol um, sorry, stationary phase, mobile phase, difference in polarity will tell you how they separate out, what will happen to them. Now, let's look at paper chromatography. So, paper chromatography is something that you've done before. Um, if you're trying to tell me that you haven't done it before, I'm guaranteed that you've done it before, probably in year 7, maybe year 8, where you've got a piece of paper, drawn a line on it, put some texture on it, and dunked it in some paper. Sorry, dunked it in some water. And then, the water's risen up and taken with it the texture and spread it out into marvellous different colours. That, my friends, is paper chromatography. It's simple as that. Where you have your water being your mobile phase and your paper being your um, stationary phase. The sample that you're going to be looking at is obviously going to be your texture here that you've put a dot there on. So what happens? Um, the sample is placed on a piece of paper and the end of the paper is placed in the solvent. Generally, we draw a line here as well, which we mark as the origin. This is drawn in pencil because you don't want it to move with the rest of your compounds here. The solvent travels up the paper and drags with it the different molecules in the sample. So, obviously, it has to be something that is going to be water-soluble or something that's being relatively polar, and it will move up your um, paper here. The molecules with a similar polarity to the solvent will move further up the paper due to the mobile phase being polar, or something that has, if your mobile phase is polar, your polar things will move higher. Changing the mobile phase will change the degree of separation. So obviously you can, you can use different types of mobile phases. You don't always have to use water. It depends on what you want to separate as to what you'll use. The way we actually identify these different compounds once they've actually have been separated is using a thing called an RF value. The RF value is a way of detecting something that's been unknown because what you'll have is probably a sample or a, a standard which you can run to make sure that you know where the RF value is for that compound because a compound will move the same no matter where it is depending on making sure that you have the same um, mobile phase here. Each substance will have an RF value for a set solvent and a set temperature. Change those two things, you stuff up your chromatogram. But Keep the solvent the same, keep the temperature the same, you'll be able to match an RF value for something else. If two RF values are equal, they are likely, it is likely that they are the same compound. So what we have here is how to calculate an RF value. RF means it's how far the sample has moved from the origin here, divided by how much the solvent front has moved, so how far this um, water or this solvent has moved. In this example here, you'll have the red dot here, so you'll measure from the origin to the middle of the red dot, and then you'll have from the origin to the solvent front. Divide those two together, and you get your RF value. That's for paper chromatography. The pretty basic chromatography, but is still used and um, to identify different compounds. So now we're going to look at um, another type of chromatography, which is very similar, which is TLC, um, thin layer chromatography. This works in pretty much the same way as paper chromatography. Well, the whole thing's the same. My image here, my, my diagram here, is exactly the same as what I've had for paper chromatography. So no, nothing's really changed in the way that it works. 
The only thing that's changed is what the stationary phase is made of. Instead of being paper, instead of being something really simple and flimsy and, um, well, basic as paper, what they've done is they've upgraded it into um, a thin plate of glass which is coated in a thin layer of silica, which is like aluminium oxide, and this is used as a stationary phase. This provides a better resolution on most chromatograms. Or, um, so what we have is um, a plate which is thinly colored, co covered in silica, and that is our stationary phase. We tend to um, do the same type of thing. We, we draw a line in pencil here. We still have a, um, a solvent down the bottom here. We still apply a small amount of sample. We can use smaller sample in this as well though. So we can actually use a lot smaller samples here and then we can run this TLC and it gets a better resolution. By resolution, what I mean is better separation. So the two different or the two or three different mixtures, um, compounds in the mixture, they separate out a lot better using TLC chromatography. RF values are calculated just as they would be in paper chromatography where you measure the distance the sample has run divide that by the distance that the solvent front has run. So um, that's how you do chromatography. Um, before, before I move on, I just want to make sure that a um, couple of things where you can go wrong, some of the errors you can do when you're actually conducting either paper chromatography here or um, thin layer chromatography here, is that you are not allowed to let your solvent front run over the length of the TLC plate that you're using or the length of the paper you're using. If that does happen, you won't be able to re um, measure how far the solvent front has gone because it's moved up the um, and off the page. You can't see how far it's gone because these guys will still keep on traveling up the paper. They won't stop when the solvent front reaches the top. So you must stop the chromatogram or take it out and measure it before this solvent front reaches the top here. And as I said, um, if you're going to be comparing two chromatograms, they need to be ran using the same solvent and at the same temperature. So that's what's happening in there. So um, there are your kind of guidelines with using um, chromatography in terms of paper and TLC. Same temperature because otherwise your polarity, your polarity is not affected but your solubility is affected in terms of um, changing temperature, changes the solubility obviously. So that's um, the basics of those two things. Paper and TLC chromatography can only be used as qualitative analysis. You can't really use these type of analysis and get a quantitative analysis reading out of it. You can't actually measure how much is there. You can get an get a idea, so obviously if you're looking at these, you've got a whole lot more of this brown um, dot here than you do the red dot, but you can't really tell exactly how much it is. So it's only really qualitative where you are referencing um, RF values and that tells you what the compound is or what the uh, mixture is made up of. So that's how um, these two types of chromatography can be used, only qualitatively. In summary, paper and TLC, separation is due to polarity and the size of the molecules um, and chemicals are identified using their RF values. That's pretty much what you need to know. You need to know the basics of how it runs, um, but generally separation due to polarity. As long as you know the polarity or how it works, whether you're using a, a polar stationary phase or a non-polar stationary phase, you should be able to work out how these molecules separate. That's it. Um, that's all for this one. And what we'll do is I'll then, um, next video, I'll just move back here, and tell you it's going to be on column, HPLC, and gas chromatography. That's what the next video is going to be about, column, HPLC, and gas chromatography. The theory and how to use them qualitatively in the next video. So I'll see you then. Bye.